Welcome everyone to the Franklin Whole Home Podcast. I'm here today with our product manager, Jay-Z, or Jay Zargami, the original Jay-Z. Right, how are you doing? <laughs> Hi everyone. We're here today, we're gonna to be talking about all things NEM and NBT. Yep. You wanna specify the actual title? NBT is Net Billing Tariff, uh, sort of historically affectionately known as NEM 3.0 in California but it's officially the net, net billing tariff. So for those of you who haven't seen our white paper yet, we released something called the NBT white paper and it's on our website. It goes through all the financials of, of the value of the whole Franklin Home Power solution. How do you define NBT? How do you start with that? Well, the history of interconnected PV systems in California started off with net metering, net energy metering, which is where customers PV system, if they don't use the energy while it's being produced off the roof in the home, then it's got to go somewhere and it historically has just gone out to the grid and the utility would give a one for one exchange. If they charge you a dollar for power coming into your home, they would credit you a dollar for power that went out. And that was in the early days, but once more people started getting solar, they changed that exchange rate. So they're not giving you that same retail rate exchange. So NEM 1.0, evolved to NEM 2.0, where it was more restrictive. They weren't giving as much of a credit for it. And now as grid management has become more and more of an exercise in you know, just managing the grid properly uh, and equitably for everyone involved, including the utility, as well as homeowners and, and just making things kind of more uh, sustainable in the long term. NEM 3.0 or net billing tariff officially is what Californians are having to work with now. And, and the exchange rate on that is really skewed to disincentivize any homeowners with PV to export that extra uh, energy to the grid or extra power to the grid. So it just doesn't make financial sense to export any of that system to the grid anymore. So that's why you get a much better financial return, that value proposition for batteries in your home is, is much greater. And so it's now a necessary part of any new PV system. So can you define what's different about our current Franklin Home Power solution? For NBT or for net billing tariff. So um, really the differentiators in our current in interconnection environment are such that customers who already had solar before under NEM 1.0 or NEM 2.0, as they've grown, they've added onto their home, bought an EV or whatever the case may be, their load profile has, has uh, increased and they've now got a bigger bill when they had base, you know, may have zeroed it out in the, in the past. So they want to add more solar. They realize the benefits in the past. And they want to add more solar, solar to offset that new load demand. demand. Recent regulations up until very recently, if those homeowners had added new solar to their existing NEM1 or NEM2 system, they would invalidate that interconnection agreement and be forced into the NBT tariffs and the NBT tariffs compensate you at a tragically low rate during the day for any excess PV generation. So you might get 10 cents on the dollar or maybe even less on exported energy versus storing it in the battery. And does the utility notify you of that? Or they just say... I think that they, they'd be obligated to notify okay. you that you've okay. lost that... No uh, shady that, business? <laughs> yeah, no, no shady. Everything's above board. Okay. But... You know, what's changed now is as of just a couple of months ago, all of the, the major uh, ISOs, the, the, the utilities in California have allowed homeowners to install a non-exporting PV system sort of in a bubble mm -hmm. to that existing NEM1 or NEM2 system so that that's non-exporting so that it won't affect that NEM1 or NEM2 interconnection agreement. So those rates are left unchanged mm -hmm. as long as the new system does not export to the grid. While that's a huge deal for people in California, there's nothing particularly special about the, the use case for any manufacturer. Rather than limiting homeowners and installers from a certain type of interconnection that allows you to do that non-exporting system, which is basically behind the original NEM system, we enable that original NEM system to be interconnected on the backup loads panel, whereas other solutions don't offer that as an option. And that's kind of a big deal because when you've got that non-exporting system and your original NEM system is connected on the utility side mm -hmm. of that, that service interconnection, then 
when the grid goes down, that original NEM system is not part of your backup microgrid. And so that's kind of a big deal because if you've got a right size system to offset that new oh, yeah. bill, oh, yeah. you want to also have the, all of the PV that's on your roof available for your, you know, as long as the grid is down, you want all of the PV and the batteries to work together. And so what we've enabled through our system, through the AP box actually, mm -hmm. is interconnecting that original NEM system onto the loads panel still staying compliant with the, the, the updated regulations, mm -hmm. but enabling that original system to work in backup mode too. So that's kind of, a, it's, a, it's a huge deal. The details won't get into too much today, but we can definitely you know, expand on that later. Absolutely. So for those of you who don't know what the AP box, I'll have Jay describe that a little bit more in depth. Sure. Just, it's not as well known, but it is in addition within our ecosystem, so. Yeah, so the, the AP box is an auxiliary device that allows remote interconnections, whether it's at a far distance from the gateway where most of the PV is interconnected for any normal system, so that we can meter it and control it either at a distance or independently. And in the case of the NBT avoidance for California, we take that AP box and manage the existing NEM on the onto that load panel like what i was saying before and the ap box allows you to not only meter that independently but also curtail that whenever necessary so when in off-grid mode if the the batteries are full or whatever we just just turn that off great yeah. great next question would be so what are the actual savings of net billing tariff versus non-net billing tariff okay it's the that's the exchange rate it's yep. the exchange rate between any pv that you're not using in the home during the day yep. or able to charge in, you know into the batteries you're exporting out to the grid under nem1 or nem2 you might be getting 80 something 82 83 percent of that retail rate crediting for that exported pv whereas under nbt that export crediting for that you know under nbt is Oh man, I think it's like maybe 10%. Wow. I forget the exact numbers, but yep. it's significantly less. It's, yeah. it's just, it just doesn't make sense to do it. Whereas the round trip efficiency or the return rate, a comparison on the battery is close to 90%. Wow. So if you don't have the FHB installed or you're looking to get into it, here's another reason why to, to look at Franklin WH. So any final takeaways you want to give to the audience today? Works fine. It just works. It that's, works. That's, that's one easy. of the. That's one of my favorite <laughs> quotes from one of our biggest installers. Is it just works? It just works, and we hear that everywhere. And so it's not just for the installer. It's also for the homeowner. It, it's just a seamless process through and through. So that's right. Yeah. Any questions? You can always reach out to any of us on the product team, engineering at franklinwh.com. Yep. And I'm Brandon Sanchez, Director of Marketing here at Franklin WH. Any marketing related questions, please direct those to me, brandon.sanchez at franklinwh.com. And so I thank you, Jay, for joining me. You're welcome. Me. Happy so, to help. Thanks everyone for watching. Take care. Take care. Allah.